Gentlemen, five years ago, I forwarded to your society what I believed would prove my final report on the strange case of the Corsican brothers, the Siamese twins whom I separated in their infancy by surgery. The widespread scientific interest in this unique operation and its tragic consequences impels me to recount the latest developments in the case. I must begin with the recent day we peaceful Cossackans awoke from our medieval apathy to find ourselves under the heels of a ruthless dictator and his bandit army. Lies! Nothing but lies! Gennaro talks of freeing us from tyranny while he puts us in chains. His paid assassins overrun our villages and farms. And this he calls peace! But friends, there is one man in Corsica that even Gennato fears. A man who is ready to lead us if we will follow him. Gennato thinks he has us under his heel. But he will soon learn we can still fight for freedom when called upon by the one man all Corsica loves. The Duke of Cassini. Yeah. That's off to His Excellency, Baron Gennato. You there, step forward. Your name? Emilio Vacchi. I'm a blacksmith. I, too, have been a blacksmith, my friend. Then you should take your hat off to me. I still earn an honest living. Why, you... One moment, nephew. Let the fellow say what's on his mind. Anything more before we hang you for disturbing the peace? You're a brave man, Gennato, when you're dealing with an unarmed man. Say it to me now, as one blacksmith to another. If I could, I'd let this say it for me. Very well, I'll accommodate you, my friend. We'll exchange one blow at a time. You can take first shot at me. And if I drop you, your soldiers will take a shot at me. No, if you drop me, you'll go free. That's my order, nephew. You say your arm earns you an honest living. Let's see if it can earn you my pardon. Ready? I can't understand you taking such a chance, Uncle. If I didn't take chances, I'd still be a blacksmith. And you, with all your education, would still be struggling along on a lieutenant's pay. All over the island, our police are arresting agitators who shot the name of the Duke of Cassini. Patience, nephew, patience. It's a serious matter, Uncle. We ought to get rid of him right away. Why should I make a martyr out of the Duke? We're keeping a watch on his estate, aren't we? Night and day. You know, I have a feeling the next time Cassini leaves his villa, Providence will come to my aid. Who knows? Perhaps he'll be attacked by bandits. There were still men in Corsica eager to fight for freedom. Among them, Count Mario Franchi, supposedly the surviving member of the Corsican brothers. One evening, I was summoned to a secret meeting at the Franchi villa. Therefore, we, the undersigned nobles, 
call upon you, Baron Cesar Giannato, to renounce your assumption of power and restore to the people their traditional right to govern. But, Franchi, do you realize that if we sign this as Cassini wants us to, we're signing our death warrant? Nonsense. If we're joined together behind Cassini, Giannato wouldn't dare try anything. He'd run for cover like a whipped dog. Why does it have to begin with us? Well, it has to start somewhere. Dr. Paoli, you haven't said a word. What do you think of the Duke's plan? I think we should wait and hear what Cassini has to say about it when he gets here. Are we ready, Guito? Yes, Your Grace. The escort has gone ahead, but I wish we had more men. The life of the Duke of Cassini is the most precious thing in Corsica. Thank you, Guito. Let's hope Janata holds the same sentiment. the Duke of Cassini's carriage. Uncle Cesar is psychic cousin. He predicted Providence would come to his aid. Where is it headed? They turned up the road to the Franchi place. Well, get with it, Sergeant. We don't want to delay an act of Providence. Master Dito, master! you say? Yes, senor. I was lucky to escape. Look after him, Lorenzo. Well, gentlemen, I thought every bandit in Corsica was in Gennaro's army. They are. This is Gennaro's doing. Yes, and if he can do that to as fine and beloved a man as the Duke of Cassini, then I say none of us is safe. I have a family to think of. I'm going home. I, uh, I'll ride with you. Wait, wait. Just going home and sitting like ducks on a pond isn't going to save you. He's right. Donato would pick you off one at a time. But, Mario, what else is there to do? I suggest that we offer Donato our allegiance and full support. Now we're talking sense, Mario. I never thought I'd live to see a Franchi grovel. <laughs> if you can believe it, Dr. Paoli, so will Donato. Now I know the plan will work. It'll give us time to gather men and weapons secretly. Come in. Oh, it's you, darling. And who else might it have been after only six months of marriage? Well, it might have been um, Maria with my hot chocolate. Well, have Maria get your trunk and bags. You can start packing tonight. Not really. Italy? A visit to your beloved Venice. Oh, darling, how wonderful. Oh, my family will be so happy. You know, Father still insists that he should have won that last chess game you played. You're going alone. Hello? The Duke of Cassini was murdered on his way here tonight. Oh, Mario, how terrible. It was Gennato's doing. There's no doubt about that. And you mean to avenge him? This is no vendetta, darling. We must rid Corsica of this butcher. We have to build a resistance movement swiftly and secretly. And I want you out of harm's way while we're going about it. I come from a long line of soldiers. Christina. When I married you, I became a Corsican and a Franchi. And you told me yourself no Franchi has ever run from danger. But Lucian Franchi, the other twin, was not dead. Recovering from the wounds received in a vendetta, but with the memory of his past life a complete blank, he had joined a band of gypsies, and fate had brought him back to Corsica. Here, the strange metaphysical bond between him and the brother he no longer remembered was manifesting itself with extraordinary intensity. Carlos. One of those strange visions of mine. 
I saw myself on a horse with some other man. Oh, you're just daydreaming again. Come on now, let's get back to our practice. You haven't thrown a knife since we left Italy. Zelda, what is this thing that comes over me at times? Am I going mad? No, no, Corliss. It's only your lost memory trying to come back to you. Just like that doctor said in Genoa. It's more than a lost memory. It's, it's as though another soul were in possession of my body. Madonna Mia, don't talk like that. It frightens me. It's become worse since I came to Corsica. I seem to see myself in a fine house, dressed like a gentleman. There's a beautiful young woman. You're just seeing us when we get rich. Come on now, let's practice some more. Our first Corsican performance must go well. Proceed, nephew. What's next? The Duke of Cassini's funeral was held at 11 o'clock this morning. Oh, sad affair. Did my floral wreath make an impression? A sensation, Excellency. The biggest one of all. <laughs> Good. Next item. Ah! What is that, a razor or a meat axe? Sorry, Excellency. Well, do something about it, you idiot. Go on, nephew. A gypsy carnival from Italy request permission to tour the island. Granted. They may amuse my people. Next. Now that all the nobles, even Count Franchi, whose loyalty you doubted, have sent their expressions of allegiance, the time has come to legalize your regime. You know, I was thinking that myself. Send out a proclamation to that effect. That won't do, Excellency. Why not? You need the recognition of the King of France. Oh, France has forgotten all about us. But, Excellency, once you have the King's sanction, Corsica is yours for life. My boy, I'm proud of you. You're beginning to think like a Gennato. Why not? I've had a good teacher, Uncle. <laughs> I'll write His Majesty a letter. It just happens that I spent most of last night preparing a draft that might serve the purpose. I think it includes all your ideas. Good. Good. Let's hear it. To His Most Sacred Majesty, Charles X, King of France. I, Baron Cesar Gennato, acting Chief of State and pacifier of the island of Corsica, having obtained papers of allegiance from all nobles under my... I, I don't know much about such things, Signore, but the letter sounded very convincing. If King Charles accepts this at face value, we're beaten before we start. How's it being sent? By courier and a small escort to Ayacho. There is a French ship sailing tonight. They haven't started yet? No, no. When I left the palace, the letter was being engrossed on parchment. Well, there might still be time to do something. Thanks, Reggio. You're a good and brave man. Mm, a man must do what he can, signore. I'm too old for fighting, but I have eyes and ears. Well, get back before they miss you. I'm sure the King of France will be deeply impressed. Here you are. Deliver that safely, or don't come back. Yes, Your Excellency. Remember, drive off the escort, but let the courier go through. Lorenzo and I will be waiting for him at the crossroads. Well, why don't we just kill the dogs and destroy the letter? No, I want Janata to think his letter was delivered. While he's waiting for an answer, we can be gathering strength for a real blow. <laughs> And now, good people, Carlos the Great and Princess Zelda in their death-defying feet with the flashing knife. Our man have intercepted. shooting. The others mustn't know the courier was stopped.
Surrender, you're my prisoner. And I'll take that letter you're carrying. My shoulder! I responded to the gypsy summons, little dreaming of the shock that was to be mine. Thank you for coming, Dr. Paoli. The villagers said you wouldn't refuse any calls. They shouldn't have sent for you. I'm all right now. What, uh, what was wrong? Nothing, nothing. I, I'm sorry to have troubled you. Surely there must have been something. You must examine him, Doctor. Try to find the cause of his sickness. Perhaps you can cure these attacks. What uh, kind of attacks? I don't want to talk about it. At times in his mind, he, he sees himself as another man. Like in a dream, only more real. I can't explain it, but he seems to feel all the things this other man in his mind feels. Oh, stop your chattering. The doctor will think I'm mad. And today, what did you feel? In my shoulders, though I'd been shot. But there isn't even a bruise, see? Why do you say it was as though you had been shot? Because I saw the pistol fire at me. Maybe I am mad. Give him a pinch of this in water. It will soothe his nerves. Do you remember having these attacks even when you were a boy? My mind only goes back to a day five years ago when the gypsies found me in Marseille. I was wandering about, dazed, not even able to remember my name. They took me in, named me Carlos, made me one of them. That's the only memory I have. Before that, nothing. I see. Well, take the medicine and I'll visit you again. Perhaps tomorrow. Thank you, Doctor. Dr. Paoli, I was just going to fetch you. Count Franchi has been wounded. Yes, yes, Lorenzo, I know. You know, but how? There was no time for anyone to have told you. Never mind, take me to Mario. But if Lorenzo didn't fetch you, who told you I was wounded? No one told me. Well, yeah, that will do for now. You'll be all right in a few days. Well, it only grazed your shoulder. Don't be so mysterious, Doctor. How did you know Mario was hurt? Did Mario ever tell you of his brother, Lucian? Only that they were twins. And that Lucian was killed five years ago in a vendetta. They were no ordinary twins. They were born joined together. Joined together? What I know is a Siamese twins. I separated them by surgery. But it was only a physical separation. Providence deemed that Lucian should still be bound to Mario spiritually by a tie that no surgeon's scalpel could sever. In what way, Doctor? All his life, Lucian was bound to feel all of Mario's sensations and emotions, joy, pain, illness, anything. Strange. It was terrible for Lucian. He grew to hate me bitterly towards the end. But why bring up all these painful memories now, Doctor? Because Lucian did not die in that Marseille hospital five years ago. What? He recovered from his wound, but his memory was gone. And one day he vanished without a trace. Why did you tell me that he died there? It seemed best for both of you. I wanted him to find a new life somewhere, his own life. Where is he now? In a gypsy camp near the village. He knows himself only as Carlos, the knife thrower. You've seen him? Yes, and you can imagine what a shock it was to me to see him doubly afflicted. His past a blank, and yet still tortured by the experiences and emotions of a brother he doesn't know he has. And today he felt the pain of my wound. He not only felt it, he saw himself being shot from a horse. Doctor, you've got to bring him here. We must do everything we can for him. I'm wondering if that would be wise. 
I dread to risk the return of all his bitterness and hatred toward you. Oh, that's a chance we have to take. Lucian is still a Franchi. This estate is as much his as it is mine. Mayor Gennata presents his compliments. Count Franchi, were you riding on the Ayacho Road this afternoon? Why, yes, Baron, I was. You're very careless, my friend. In what way? You lost your sword. This is yours, I believe. Why, yes, of course. There's the Franchi crest on the hill. It was found at the exact spot where a state courier was attacked, about the same time you were taking your ride. What do you think about that? Why, Baron, I think you're hinting at something. Hinting? It was reported to me you led the attack. Was I wearing a mask? You were. And a black velveteen jacket with a stocking cap? You were. Was I riding a bay horse with a braided mane and tail? You were. You see, nephew, he admits it. No, Baron, you're wrong. The man I've just described attacked me, too. Well, he did. I suppose he shot you off your horse. Why, yes. Shot me right here. Then he stole my purse, took my sword, and that's all I remember. Well, well, that explains everything. From now on, I'm going to see to it personally that you're protected from harm. Nephew, put a guard around the estate. Have them accompany Count Franchi wherever he goes. Baron, that isn't at all necessary. But it is necessary. Otherwise, I'd be worrying about you day and night. Do you really think my husband is in that much danger, Baron? With such a ravishing bride, definitely. Good evening, my friends. Charming people, the Franchis. You didn't believe that bandit story of his, did you, Uncle? <laughs> Far be it for me to accuse a man in the presence of such a lovely wife. He has left eight men on guard. We can still use the secret passage from my bedroom to the orchard. I suppose Donato's guards discover you were out one night. Yes, you're right. Perhaps fate sent Lucian back to Corsica at the time when he was most needed. Needed? But of course, it would be like old times. When Lucian and I used to trick people who didn't know there were two of us. Gennaro thinks he's got me bottled up. With Lucian here in my place, I can go and come as I please. It has possibilities, Mario. Go and bring him here tonight, by the secret passage. On one condition. There must be no attempt made to restore his memory prematurely. But I want him here as my brother. Mario, there is already a delicate balance in Lucian's case between sanity and insanity. A sudden shock might unbalance him permanently. All right, it's a promise. But as soon as we've finished with Gennato, Lucian is to have every opportunity to regain his memory and his rightful place in the world. Agreed, and I'll do everything I can to help him. Until later, then. You mentioned money. How much? I assure you the terms will be most liberal. My friend is a man of wealth and position. His name is Franchi. Count Mario Franchi. All right, Doctor. I'll talk to this Count Franchi. Is real or, or just another trick of my mind? Carlos, this is my friend, Count Franchi. Good evening, Carlos. Not only real, but my living image. It's you I see in those visions. Not lost memories of my past. That horse you rode today, it reared and you were nearly thrown, weren't you? Yes. And then you fought with swords and were shot from your horse. Yes. 
This is the wound. I saw it all and felt your pain. But why? Answer that one, Doctor. Why should I be haunted day and night by a man I've never even met before? There's an explanation for everything that's happened to you, Carlos. But for your own sake, you must come to understand it gradually. Well, how long must I go on living this man's life as though it were my own? The first requisite in your case is the restoration of your memory. And for that, we need your full cooperation. I'll do anything you say. Then listen to Count Franchi. The plan he has in mind is almost certain by association with familiar faces and objects to bring your memory back. All I want from you, Carlos, is to make this extraordinary resemblance between us useful to me and to Corsica. In what way? I'm a prisoner here in my own house, under the eyes of Baron Gennato's guards. With your help, I could join my friends and organize our revolt against this self-appointed dictator of Corsica. I want you to take my place here for a while as Count Mario Franchi. Me, a count? Signore, who would believe that? With a little barbering and instruction as to my personal habits and tastes, I think you could fool even my servants. And I could visit you every day as my patient. All right, Signore. When do I start? You've already started. Let's drink to our mutual good luck. I don't think you should stay up any longer, darling. Christina, this is Carlos. Good evening, Carlos. Dr. Paoli told me all about you. You're no stranger to me either, Signora. Carlos has accepted our proposal. He's going to stay with us for a while. Welcome to Villa Franchi, Carlos. We'll do all we can to make you comfortable. train loaded with provisions for Gennato's men is passing through the Grand Ole Valley this afternoon. We'll intercept it here. Secret agents or handbill collectors. You don't have to bring these to me. The streets are knee-deep in them. But what do you know about them? Nothing. Do you know where they're printed? No. Do you know who pays for them? No. Do you know who distributes them? No. But yes, Your Excellency. Ah. But who? We suspect Count Mario Franchi. Franchi again. I suppose he led the attack on the pack train and left this for me as a souvenir. We have reason to believe so. Idiot. You're lying to cover your incompetence. Now, get out! Do you suppose Franchi could have slipped by the guards? Not a chance. I get daily reports. He's never once left the villa. 
I'm tired of these rumors and reports about Franchi. He's either with us or against us. But, Uncle, surely you don't believe in his pretended allegiance? <laughs> Do you think I'm a fool? But he signed a pledge of loyalty. The time has come to make him live up to it. Before dawn. Do you want my man to think that I prefer your kisses to assaulting the armory at Barrier tonight? Of course. What woman wouldn't? The armory. That sounds so ominous. Men are flocking to us, but they can't fight without weapons. Oh, Mario, I don't know which is worse. Not seeing you for a whole week or having you appear for a moment only to say goodbye all over again. Oh, Christina. <laughs> Mario, we've rounded up the horses. Where have you got them? At the gate in the south pasture. But we'd better hurry before the guard makes its rounds. Come back soon, darling. Luigi, we'll serve ourselves in the buffet. As you wish, madame. Your soup will get cold. Sorry. I was reliving a moment out in the garden. There are dinner, Your Excellency. I'll announce you. Never mind, we'll announce ourselves. Wow, wow. A scene of domestic bliss. Countess, your beauty overwhelms me as always. My dear Franchi, you don't know how glad I am to see you up and around. The pleasure is mutual, Baron. Won't you join us? If you're sure we're not inconveniencing you. Why, no, of course not. Knowing your devotion to my regime, I've arranged to have you appear with me at an important public ceremony. What is the occasion? Oh, tomorrow they're unveiling my statue in the plaza of Ayacho. You were going to make the unveiling speech. Well, that's a great honor, Baron, but I'm not much of an orator. Don't let that worry you. My clever nephew will have written it down for you. Afterwards, you and your charming bride will be my guests of honor at a palace reception. We'll be highly honored, Your Excellency. Oh. The pleasure will be all mine. You know, it'll be a great stroke for Corsica. It'll put an end to those outrageous rumors. Rumors? Yes. While you've been shut up here recovering from your wound, our enemies have been spreading it around that you, my good and loyal friend, are leading those rebellious cutthroats and bandits. How terrible. It's just as well that everybody knows that a, a man can't be in two places at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> the night patrol's been gone 20 minutes, Mario. Nice of Genato to cut his armory guard in half for our benefit. With luck, we can get enough arms and ammunition to supply all the men who've joined us. Give the signal.
likely men into the warehouse. The ammunition boxes first, then the muskets. Nothing. I'm all right. It's just these spasms of pain in my shoulder. You'd have thought you were killing somebody. serious. He's still weak from the loss of blood. If you'll excuse us, I'll have him taken up to bed. Well, of course, dear lady. Perhaps he needs a change of doctors. If you like, I'll send over my surgeon general in the morning. Oh, no, please. Dr. Paoli is quite capable and an old friend. As you like. But we mustn't have anything interfere with the unveiling ceremony. I'm counting on you both. Perhaps Franchi's sudden illness is only an excuse to avoid tomorrow's ceremony. <laughs> He'll attend if we have to tie him to his horse. Grisha, stop the wagon. right now, but you fainted at dinner. Do you remember what caused it? I remember everything. Even this room. That whole picture. Carlos. No, not Carlos. Lucian. Lucian Franchi. 
I'm so glad, Lucian. It came so suddenly, I, I'm still a little confused. You mustn't tire yourself. Dr. Paoli warned us about that. Please sit down, Lucian. Here, drink this. You're very sweet and kind. It's no wonder I fell in love with you. You are a little confused. I'm Christina, the wife of your brother, Mario. Mario. Of course, it would be Mario. He always had the best of everything. For a moment, I thought my dreams of you were realities. I understand. I know about the strange bond between you and Mario. It's more than a bond. It's living two lives at once. It was unbearable until you became part of it. Like a beautiful dream, a fairy tale. You've lived in my brain and my heart ever since. I don't want to be cruel, Lucian. But you're still confusing dreams with reality. It's deeper than that. I knew it this afternoon when I saw Mario take you in his arms like this and kiss you three times like this. Let me go or I'll call the servants. All right. Go ahead. But what will you say to them? My husband is annoying me. Please throw him out. Please try to accept the true situation. Mario is my husband. I love him, and I always will, as long as we both live. All right. I accept it. And I drink to it. To you, Mario, and your love. As long as you both live. of concussion, but you should stay here at least for tonight. By morning, the roads will be swarming with Gennaro's patrols. Can you get me a horse tonight? You may have mine. He's no cavalry charger, but at least he won't run you into a tree. Now, you go lie down, and I'll get rid of Lucian's gypsy friends. Is Carlos all right, Doctor? Well, there's nothing wrong that a few days rest won't cure. But can't we take him with us? We've got to rejoin our caravan at Palma. That's impossible, my dear. He still has work to do for the gentleman who hired him. What is this dangerous business you've got him into? I have a right to know. I, I, I love him. Just be patient, my dear. And one day he'll return with his pockets full of gold pieces. If he comes back alive, I'll be happy enough. You, you will tell him where to find us. Of course, my dear. Thank you. Carlos, what happened to make you desert your post at the villa? I'm happy to inform you, Doctor, that Carlos the Gypsy is dead. Count Lucian Fancy has taken his place. Lucian, your memory's returned. Yes, thanks to that crack on the head that Mario was kind enough to suffer for my sake. I didn't do it on purpose, but I'm glad it happened. Lucian, this is wonderful. Madonna mia. Like old times, eh, Mario? The Franchi twins against another murderous tyrant. Right you are. And between us, we'll run Gennato into the sea. We'd better do it before tomorrow afternoon, or Christina and I may find ourselves in Gennato's dungeons, or worse. Why, what happened? His Excellency paid us a visit this evening, full of suspicion and oily pretensions of friendship. He did, eh? Go on. He's calling for us tomorrow afternoon to take us to the unveiling of his statue in the city plaza, to show the people that Count Franchi is his faithful friend and admirer, in spite of reports to the contrary. If that happens, our cause is ruined. We'd never live it down. I'm more alarmed for the safety of that beautiful wife of yours, brother, than anything else. But leave it to me. I'm going to return the Baron's call. And I think I can promise you that he'll never see Villa Franchi again. Nothing like that, Lucian. If you missed or were recognized, we might as well give up the fight and run for it. I don't intend to miss. Please, Lucian, don't chance it. Go to the villa and bring Christina to our mountain camp tomorrow morning. Now it is like old times. 
Mario Franchi issues the orders. Not orders, Lucian. Just an urgent request. When you put it like that, how can I refuse? All right, brother. I'll bring Christina to you safe and sound in the morning. Good night. Good night, Lucian. Carlos. What are you doing here? We brought your brother here. We thought it was you. My brother? Then you know. Well, you can't blame me for listening, Carlos. What happens now to you and me? You go back to the caravan and forget everything you saw and heard. I have an appointment with Baron Gennato. But you've promised your brother. Before I'm through, I'll make fools of them both. Franchi. Too bad. All that grunting and groaning, only to have to put it on again. But you're early, my friend. The unveiling of my statue isn't until tomorrow. The unveiling will still take place. But it'll be your dead body and not your statue. Put on that boat. So long as this is my last hour, would you mind explaining something? How did you get past my guard at your villa? <laughs> Very simple. There's a secret passage. <laughs> I must warn you, Count, there's no secret passage here. We don't need one. You and I are going out side by side like good friends. Only the point of my dagger will be jogging in your spine at every step. The boot, please. <laughs> Very clever. Master stroke. I can't wait to see the outcome. <laughs> Lucian, get dressed. We're getting out of here. There's no time to talk. Gennato and his soldiers will be here at any minute. At this time of night? But why? Stop asking questions and hurry. I'll take you to Mario's camp. I'm not going anywhere with you until you tell me what's happened. There's your answer. Now we're probably too late. Up the stairs. Take him alive. The windows are closed. By the secret passage you told me about. Well, good evening, Countess. Or I should say good morning, rather. Where is my husband? I demand that you let me see him. <laughs> Very good. Very good indeed. But the show is over, dear lady. I don't know what you're talking about. 
Of course not. There's no excuse for this, breaking into our home. My husband is a sick man. Sick in the mind only, Countess. But he was well enough tonight to kill one of my guards with his bare hands, climb our walls, and try to assassinate me. I don't believe you. He wouldn't attempt such a thing. I'm afraid he's crazy enough to try anything. Even you are not safe. I can't allow you to expose yourself to such danger any longer. You're going to be my guest for a little while. I'll stay here with some men, Uncle. We'll find that secret passage if we have to tear down every wall. Why waste the effort? Burn the place down. Any person giving aid or comfort to the traitor Franchi will be punished to the full extent of the law. And anybody who looks suspicious or even sounds suspicious, arrest them! as stupidly foolhardy as this. Easy on the names, brother. Well, look what you've caused already. My wife a prisoner. The Frenchy villa in ashes. And our whole cause threatened long before we're ready to fight Gennaro in the open. Well, at least I tried. And if I'd succeeded, all your troubles would have been over. Well, I've got plenty of troubles now. And the worst of them is to know how to get Christina out of Gennaro's palace. Oh, that's the easiest one to cure. I've got it all arranged for you. Of course, if you don't want to listen. Well, after last night, don't expect me to get excited about any plan of yours. All right. I'll send word to my gypsy friends that tonight's plan's off. What have the gypsies got to do with it? They're going to entertain at Gennaro's reception tonight. You were to have gone ahead disguised as a fortune teller with a gypsy costume for Christina to escape in. Do you think that would work? With a few tricks of the trade that I can teach you in no time, it can't miss. Mario, the men are ready for the raid on the granary. Wait a minute. The granary raid will help our plan. It gives you something to foretell, something to impress Gennato with. That's right. That's the way it has to be timed. And, brother, it would be still better if a Franchi is reported to have led the raid. Lorenzo, my brother will be in command. Zelda, as long as my brother's alive, you can't count on a thing I do or say from one hour to another. Half the time, I'm living his life, thinking his thoughts. Even at this very minute, I can feel his longing to rescue his wife and take her in his arms. You talk as though you're in love with her already. No, but the longer he lives, the more I'll be thinking of her when I should be thinking of you. When he's gone, I can forget about her entirely. If I could only be sure you weren't using me to, to get rid of a husband and not just a brother. You know I hate him and everything about him. All right. If you hate him that much, I hate him too. I'll do what you ask. I knew I could count on you. Has my husband arrived yet? He's outside the gate in his gypsy disguise, waiting for Regio's signal. And he's counting on your influence with the Baron to be sure the guards admit him. Did the Baron seem surprised I wanted to see him? Huh? Surprised and delighted, madame. He'll be here any minute. I hope he believes my sudden change to amiability. Mm, the Baron is infatuated, madame. He'll believe what he wants to believe. Well, we can only do our best, Maria. But my husband is taking a dreadful risk. Why do men do these things? The answer is as old as the world. It's love, madame.
You sent for me, my dear Countess? Yes, Baron. I'm tired of being cooped up here with an armed guard outside my door. Is this what you call being your guest? I feel as though I were some dangerous prisoner of war. Sentry! Report to your sergeant. Tell him this guard is dismissed until further notice. There you are, my dear. A prisoner no longer, but more dangerous than ever. You're the dangerous one, Baron. Well, I'm glad you're beginning to appreciate me. Now, if you'd only consider attending my reception tonight. Why not? I see no reason to remain sulking in my room, while the future Governor General of Corsica entertains his adoring public. And the Marquis of France, my dear. A royal envoy sent with my commission. Then there is nothing left but to admit defeat in my husband's name and offer our congratulations. My dear Countess, you're as smart as you are enchanting. You forget, Baron, I'm still a married woman. A condition I hope to correct very soon, dear lady. Stop this infernal racket. Pardon, Excellency, this gypsy bag. Master, don't turn me away. I bring you a message from the stars. What do you take me for, gypsy? Throw the thieving beggar out. Oh, Baron, the poor man. Don't send him away. Wait. You there. What's all this nonsense about a message from the stars? <laughs> Master, I am Farron, Prince of the Zingaris. I can foretell the future both for you and the beautiful lady. What do you say, Countess? I think it might be very exciting. Bring him to my study. The mist from the distant spaces has gathered into clouds. Dark clouds. What does that mean? Rain? Now the mists are thinning. I see the streets of a village. There are dead men all about. Soldiers. Your soldiers, Highness. You lie, Faker. See a building. There is a sign. It is the granary. Nonsense. I have a strong guard at the granary. I'll show you what it means to insult my intelligence. Take him out and give him 30 lashes. Bad news, General. Franchi has struck again. Where? They took us by surprise. Where, I ask you? The granary. I managed to escape. Take him out and shoot him for deserting his post. Get those road patrols into action. Try to cut off Franchi's retreat. My apologies for doubting you, Prince. That was an amazing revelation. Thank you, Excellency. Oh, and now, my remarkable friend, about something more personal, like matters of the heart. Oh, yes. You promised to tell us something about our futures. For that, I have to read the lady's part. Well, let's get on with it. Yes, Master. What a magical hand. It is plainly written. You are greatly attracted to a certain man. Really? Uh-huh, go on. A man of title. A man who governs the people? A man who leads them. Where is this man? Right in this room, Excellency. You see, Countess? It's written in the stars. You can't escape your destiny. Oh, we'll have to drink to that. The gypsy dress is in your room by now. Not now, thank you, Baron. If you'll excuse me, I'd like to change into the gown I'm going to wear this evening. I'm anxious to make a good impression on the King's envoy. Of course, Countess. You know, it's a pity I can't present you as the Governor General's lady. 
That's an honor beyond my wildest dream, Your Excellency. You know, my friend, with these magical powers of yours, you might have a great influence on my future. Nothing would make me happier, Excellency. <laughs> as soon as we see your husband in the garden, you must go down the back stairs. I hope nothing happens to Mario. Look, madame. Here they come. Your health, my friend. To you, Excellency. And may my fondest hopes for your future be realized. What's that? It is my gypsy friends. May I make them welcome in your name? Go ahead. Zelda Grisha, friends! His Excellency is delighted to receive you. Put your best foot forward and on with the show! Princess Farron, shall we go for a little stroll? Anywhere with you, darling. Let's hope our escape is written in the stars. Your Excellency, there's something you must know at once. Prince Farron is an imposter. He's Count Franchi. Look, there he's taking his wife towards the gate. We're almost to the gate, darling. Sorry to interrupt your stroll, Countess, but His Excellency would like an immediate audience. I wouldn't do that, Franchi. Guards. Now tell me, how did you know about this plot? Please don't blame my people. They're like children, easily tempted by a few pieces of gold coin. Count Franchi came to us and paid us to help get his wife out of your palace. Then why did you expose him? Well, I, I was afraid of what would happen to my people if the escape succeeded. But now surely you, you won't punish them? No, no harm will come to them. And you'll be well rewarded for your service. Thank you, Your Excellency. Very attractive costume, Countess, but hardly the thing for tonight's reception. As for you, we don't need a crystal ball to foretell your future, Count Franchi. Take him to the dungeon. Please, Your Excellency, if you'll release my husband, I'll take him away. We'll leave Corsica. He'll never oppose you again. My dear Countess, I'm sure your husband's fate is already written in the stars. Well, Mario and Christina should be out of Jonata's palace by now. That's right, Doctor. They should be. Lucia, 
What is it? It's nothing, just a, just a twinge from my old wound. Uh, and don't worry about Mario. I'm sure everything's going according to plan. What a clever rascal this Franchi is. I see fighting in the streets. Your soldiers are dying. And all the time he knew the granary raid was taking place at his own order. Yes, Uncle, he not only knew about the raid, but who was leading it. Which is more than we do, I'm sorry to say. Huh. You mean that nonsense about a double for Franchi? We've got the only Count Franchi there is. And if it wasn't for spoiling tonight's reception, I'd have him hanged immediately. Sir, Lieutenant Vargo has a report to make about the leader of the Granary Raid. Lieutenant? Excellency, my patrol intercepted the Granary Raiders. I engaged their leader, but he fought me off and escaped. Well, go on. It was Count Franchi himself. Or at least the Count Franchi I guarded at the villa. Are you sure of this? There can be no mistake, sir. Well, that settles it. There are two of them, the Franchi twins. But, Uncle, Lucian Franchi died five years ago in Marseille. A man who can read the future in a glass ball could very well have brought him back to life. We'll pay him a visit. You see, Franchi, my friend, the beauty of this homemade strappado of mine is that when one leg becomes numb with pain, we can start over with the other. Then there is each arm in turn. Or even one finger at a time, Uncle. Very good, Nerva. A happy thought. Well, Franchi, I have only one question to ask you about this mysterious double of yours who makes it possible for you to be in two places at the same time. If you complain of being surrounded by idiots, that's the best answer you could have. A very good try, Count, but not good enough. What I want to know is this. Is it by any chance your twin brother, Lucian Franchi? something from us you're in pain no it's not pain it's pleasure the keenest pleasure i've ever known it's mario he is in trouble <laughs> don't be a fool franchi speak is it your brother lucian i've known you and mario all your lives drive this poison from your heart Tell me, where is Mario? Maybe we can still save him. I'll tell you nothing. Let him die. It's the only way I'll ever be free. There can only be one answer. Ginato's got him and is trying to torture information out of him. Then get the men and go. Wait. The pain stopped. I think he's dead. I feel as if a great weight had been lifted from my soul. I don't believe you have a soul, Lucian Franchi. God help me, I gave you a separate body. But your soul remained with Mario. I'll go to Gennato and claim the body. At least he can't refuse to let me bury it in the Franchi tomb. He's not dead, he's only fainted. We're wasting time trying to get anything out of him. We'll hang him in the morning. What is it, Lucian? He's still alive, but not for long. They're going to hang him. Then maybe there's still time to save him. And Christina, too. The guards will be drunk tonight. We can take them by surprise. We might have that. Then you'll come with us? Get the man ready. Oh, I knew you'd change your mind. 
You'll be in there at the finish, fighting like a true Franchi. Yes, brother. In at the finish. The only Franchi. <laughs> was most timely, my dear Marquis, though I'm sorry you missed the unveiling of my statue. You should have heard the cheers. The cheers of the unthinking are easily won. You must understand, Baron, that His Majesty has given me some discretion in the matter of your commission as Governor General. The reports that have reached me are very disturbing. <laughs> Looking at those happy faces should convince you, my dear Marquis. ourselves to Janata's party a few at a time. You take your men through the garden gate, mingle with the crowd, wait for my signal to attack. You and I'll take the rest of the men over the garden wall. And free Mariel from the dungeon? He's already freed himself. Right now he's trying to rescue Christina. He'll need our help. You leave Mariel and Christina to me. Come on. Is it true that you are holding the wife of Count Franchi a prisoner, Baron? Why, you've been misinformed, my dear Marquis. The lady is my guest. I shall have to be assured of that before we hold the little ceremony of presenting you with your commission, monsieur. Why, I'll bring her down personally. At once. Christina. Don't be afraid, great lady. It's Prince Farron come to finish reading your farm. Mario. Oh. I didn't dare believe. How did you escape? Oh, never mind that now. Let's get out of here. If the hallway's clear, we'll use the back stairs. Who is it? Your devoted admirer, dear lady. Come in. Wonderful news, Countess. The King's envoy has arrived. But you're not dressed. He's impatient to meet you. You must be mad to think I'd attend your reception while my husband is in your dungeon, condemned to death. Dear lady, if you'll attend the ceremony of my installation as Governor General, I'll make you a solemn promise. What promise? As soon as the Marquis returns to his ship tonight, I'll give your husband his freedom. I'd be a fool to believe you. And I already have my freedom. 
I'd be very interested in knowing who let you out of the dungeon. You did, Baron, thanks to that homemade strapado of yours. You realize, Franchi, you're now defying the king of France? Even a king can't make a governor general out of a corpse. Sorry about your coat, Baron, but it'll do to bury you in. Take off your sword, Baron. and the Frenchy twins, and for once, both in the same place at the same time. Mario. Thanks, Lucian. I knew I could count on you. I owe you my life. That's right. And I mean to collect. No, Lucian, you mustn't. Sorry, dear lady, but you're one of the reasons why I must. You can't mean this, Lucian. You're wrong, brother. I meant it when I sent Zelda to expose you. When that didn't work, I came to end it myself. I'm not going to fight you, Lucian. You'll fight or make a murderer of me. Stop it, Lucian. Come to your senses. How long do you think I can go on living as your shadow? for his arm, but he turned as I shot. Forgive me, Lucian. It's all right, Lorenzo. I guess this is the, the only way I'll ever be really free. And so, gentlemen, I await your judgment for having interfered with divine providence. But as I watch Mario Franchi and his brave young wife happily rebuilding their villa, I find it impossible to condemn myself. Respectfully, Francesco Paoli. Mm -hmm.